Hey everyone, welcome back to another soft shock design video. Uh, it's been a while since I did one of these, so apologies for that. I wanted to talk to you today about uh, a mural I painted just over a year ago in October 2022. It was for a company called Iguana. So Iguana are an award-winning vending technology and management partner. So basically they make really nice vending machines um, that go in offices, shops, and they, they vend anything from tea, coffee, food, um, all the way up to charging your phone. They have uh, cool fancy events where they do vending machines filled with perfume and luxury items like that. So they're really at the forefront of um, that particular industry. Um, and they wanted to reflect that in uh, the mural I was going to paint for them. This was my second ever mural commission um, and it was quite a step up from the first one I did. The dimensions were 5.4 by 4.4 meters. So um, yeah, it actually spanned two floors and I was going to need to work out how I can access those higher areas. For this mural, I actually bought myself a projector, which is just here, this baby here. And um, the aim was to kind of get the digital drawing that I'd created on my iPad and project that on the wall and then trace over those lines so I had a perfect design in scale, in proportion, on the wall. However, that didn't quite work out how I wanted it to. Um, I found out very quickly when I started trying to set the projector up in that room that I didn't have enough space behind the wall um, for me to project the mural. Um, so basically it was just kind of taking up a quarter of the wall space instead of the whole wall. I had to kind of go back to the drawing board with this one and work out another way that I could put this, get this mural design up onto the wall in proportion and looking good, ready to paint. Some of you may have heard of Doodle Grids and um, I became aware of them through um, the YouTuber 1000, so shout out to 1000. Um, and I've seen them a lot since then being used by kind of mural artists. Um, and it's just basically replacing a grid with a bunch of doodles um, and then using these doodles as a reference point to map your artwork out on the wall. And I found this was actually a really effective method for getting my design onto the wall. Um, it did mean I had to paint a massive doodle grid on the wall. Uh, the clients were a bit worried when I started doing this um, as it looked nothing like the design that I proposed to them earlier on. Um, however, I, after explaining what I was doing, they were completely cool with it. So, um, And it did make kind of putting the design onto the wall a lot easier. There's a lot more reference points with the doodle grid than there is with a standard grid. And yeah, I think for my first attempt, it went pretty well. After the doodle grid um, was all painted on the wall, I then proceeded to use that as reference to then start um, penning the design up on the wall using some Poskas. I wanted to use Poskas so that the, the black ink stood out from the doodle grid paint that I'd used so I could distinguish the two. I think in hindsight I would have used slightly lighter colours as it was then a lot harder to paint over these colours um, as, as the mural progressed. And once I had finished drawing up the design on the wall using the Poskas, uh, I was then ready to start painting, which was very exciting. So as I mentioned, uh, it's quite a big space and because it's double height ceiling, um, I needed to work out how I was going to access that, that top area of the mural. Um, in the end, I had to hire what is called a scissor lift. So unbeknownst to me, um, I actually needed a license to use one of these lifts. So about uh, two or three days before I was actually meant to start painting the mural, I had to go and take a test um, to get my iPath training, uh, which means that I was then qualified to use those lifts. Um, and it was actually pretty difficult. It wasn't as hard as my driving test, but it was a full day. Um, there was lots of maneuvers around um, warehouses uh, at full height where I had to kind of reverse around tight corners and that kind of thing. Um, it was definitely harder than I expected. So uh, warning to anyone out there who is thinking of taking one of these tests, uh, be prepared. The company uh, wanted the design to be in an isometric style using their brand colours and they wanted the design to incorporate vending machines that they produce um, and show some smart technology in there and uh, 
really just kind of portrayed as futuristic, uh, utopian city um, where, you know, where these vending machines may become part of people's lives a bit more in the future. And they wanted to inject some fun in there, add some characters, that kind of thing. So it was a really fun design process. I love using isometric style. So yeah, it, it was kind of just exactly the perfect client for me. I started wanting to design and paint murals um, from 2020. I think it was something that I dreamt up during the lockdown days. And um, it was just really an urge to want to get away from my desk more and, and kind of get physical and have something that's um, still creative and still using my illustration skills, allowing me to kind of travel to different locations and paint these large scale murals. And it is just such a sense of satisfaction in creating these murals, I feel, um, that you don't get with necessarily handing over digital work to a client. Yeah, so it was a it was a real kind of learning curve. Every mural that I have done in the last year has been a new experience, has been something I've learned from it. Um, and I've been taking notes on all of these and, um, and trying to kind of improve myself as a mural artist. So um, I think, yeah, every job you get where you have to do something new, try not to be too afraid of it and try instead to look at that as a learning experience and take something away from it if you can. For this mural, I was just using um, standard kind of household paints, so Dulux Trade um, mainly, um, and then just brushes really. Uh, no spray, unfortunately, as it was all indoors. So couldn't have any nasty fumes hanging about. And yeah, I basically just got the color palette approved by the client, and then I just took that color palette to a paint uh, shop in my area and asked them kindly to mix up some colors as close to those colors as possible. I think when you're transferring a design from digital um, into physical, space um, those colors don't always translate too well so it's it's worth just kind of kind of letting the client know that the colors may change from what they're seeing on screen to the final uh, presentation i think overall we got a fairly good match to the colors that i initially showed them on screen um, when i presented the design in the first round so um, and they were really happy with uh, with how they looked in fact a lot of people were complimenting the color palette which is really good the painting process was actually uh, quite a bit slower than I initially thought it would be. Again, another lesson learned there. Um, I think I made it quite hard for myself because a lot of the shapes were quite uh, detailed um, and there was a lot of, um, yeah, kind of straight lines and straight edges that I had to get quite neat and tidy. Um, I don't think there's really any secret to this part of the mural other than it's just hard graft. It takes quite a long time to get that paint on the wall. It was quite a big wall to cover, so it felt like an impossible task at the beginning. But um, luckily, you know, once you just kind of get into the groove of things, um, it soon flies by. I was really lucky as well to um, have my partner Tanya come and help out on a few days, which was very kind of her giving up her spare time. I think in total, the mural took about eight days. Um, and each day was quite a long day. Um, I would arrive in the office about 9 a.m., um, sometimes a little earlier. And on some days I wouldn't kind of leave there until maybe 9, 10 p.m. So some of the days were quite long. Um, I think I was just really driven to get this mural done. Um, and because I'd underestimated how long it was gonna take to paint, um, I think I just needed to make up that time somewhere. I think it's made me learn that when you're doing um, mural commissions in the future, whatever time you think it's going to take, you know, always add a couple of days on top of that. And that's probably going to be close to the actual time. You always have to allow time for uh, unexpected things that happen. Um, and there were a few of these on that project. Okay, so here are the final shots of the finished mural. Enjoy.
I just want to say a big thank you to Iguana. Um, without them, this video and this mural wouldn't have been possible. It was a really fun one to design and paint. Um, and you guys were also very lovely throughout the whole process, giving me free teas and coffees, welcoming me into your office with open arms and kind of making me feel like part of the team for that week and a half that I was painting. So thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Please make sure you give this a like and leave a comment down below. Um, this would really help me. I'm a very small channel at the moment, um, so any kind of love and support would be much appreciated. Um, this, this video isn't sponsored by anyone. Um, however, if you would like to support me um, and the channel, then um, please go on to softshopdesign.com. I have a shop on there where you can buy limited edition prints from as little as £20 each. So please do take a look. I'll hopefully be adding some more into that shop soon as well. Okay, this has been really fun. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time. And hopefully I will see you on the next one.